Hello, my name is Melissa Kohler, the Global Marcom Manager here at Alpha Technologies. Today we will be starting our educational webinar series with Andreas Gill. He will take us through the pain effect and the interesting ways we can measure it. Stay tuned. Today we will be exploring the concept of the pain effect, the way we measure this effect and the applications we can develop from it. In rubber compounding, Fillers are typically added to enhance the properties of the final product to meet the requirements of the application. For example, a typical filler used in rubber compounding is carbon black, which comes in different sizes and structure types. One of the most well-known filler effects is that of reinforcement, in which the modulus of the compound increases after the addition of filler. Increasing modulus is dependent on filler type particle size, structure, volume fraction, surface chemistry, and dispersion amongst other factors. So what is modulus? Modulus is a scientific property of a material. It is perhaps the best gauge of a compound's overall toughness and extrusion resistance. Modulus is the force or stress in pounds per square inch required to produce a certain elongation or strain. Compounds with a higher modulus are more resilient and more resistant to extrusion. Generally speaking, the harder a compound, the higher its modulus. Knowing how to measure and understand modulus is very important because of the effect on processing and performance of a rubber compound that it has. The ability to measure the interactions between the filler filler and filler polymer helps us assure that the rubber compound has been processed adequately. This ability includes the measurement of filler dispersion through the polymeric matrix as well as the measurement of any in situ reaction in the internal mixer. Without a good mix, properties of cured compounds are typically inferior and may even fail to meet product specifications. This is the main reason we want to have a reliable and repeatable way to test and measure dispersion and modulus. Here, you can see a typical modulus versus time graph measured with a cured sub test using an RPA. As the material is cured, the stiffness analyzed through the modulus increases in an S shape which is very common for a polymer carbon black filled material. Let's take a look at what happens to the modulus of a material when it undergoes a dynamic mechanical test. Namely, when we measure the modulus as we increase the strain applied to the material. Normally, in a compound that has not reached a percolation threshold, or in other words, that it doesn't have enough filler particles to saturate the polymeric matrix, the elastic modulus is constant along the linear viscoelastic region. In this first picture, we used an unfilled polymer, so you can see that the modulus of the material remains almost constant through the linear viscoelastic region until we get to the nonlinear viscoelastic region around 50% strain. Remember, that we could define a material as soft or hard depending on its elastic modulus value. This graph shows a compound that has been reinforced with carbon black. We ran a strain sweep and measured the, mo the elastic modulus versus strain percentage. Notice that a softening effect begins to occur at low strain percentages compared to the previous unreinforced polymer. What we're looking here is the pain effect. So what is the pain effect? In a general sense, the pain effect is the decrease in the elastic modulus of a highly reinforced uncured rubber compound as we increase the strain during a dynamic mechanical test. A filler network is formed when highly reinforcing fillers are used in a compound above the percolation threshold significantly increasing the modulus of the compound. The phenomenon known as dynamic strain softening or pain effect 
occurs when a dynamic mechanical test is run on such a compound from low to high strain. As strain increases, elastic modulus decreases. This dynamic strain effect has been measured in the industry for decades, often tested on dynamic oscillatory shear rheometers, such as the RPA. So how do we quantitatively measure the pain effect? Typically, we measure our shear modulus G prime at 1% strain, then we measure G prime at 5% or 10%. We then calculate the ratio between our G prime at high strain and G prime at low strain. A higher ratio indicates a better dispersion. It is important to point out that this test must be done at 70 degrees Celsius or less. The pain effect method may be applied for quality control of the rubber mixing operation and for research and development evaluation of new compound formulations or process conditions. We designed an experiment so you can see how this method provides great value within the rubber industry. Silica filled SBR and BR compounds with varying levels of TESPT organosilane were formulated and mixed to show the impact of salinization on the pain effect behavior. The test began with a 10 minute conditioning step at 70 degrees Celsius, 0.07% strain, and 0.1 Hz. The conditioning step allows for thermal and internal stress stabilization as well as filler network recovery. A strain sweep was then performed from plus or minus 0.07% to plus or minus 125% strain at 70 degrees Celsius and 1 Hz. Modulus and tangent delta was collected. Shown here, the elastic modulus G prime is plotted versus percent strain for the six compounds. As can be seen, increasing the level of TESPT from zero pHRs to two pHRs causes the G prime value to fall at low strains. This is due to the reduction in hydrogen bonding between the silica particles, which reduces the filler reinforcement effect. Further increasing the level of TESPT leads to a small increase in the G prime values due to covalent bonding between the silica particles and the rubber matrix. Here, you can see the tangent delta response to applied strain. There is a distinct difference between the tangent delta curve without TESPT and those with TESPT. As the amount of TESPT is increased, the 10 delta values at low strain generally increase and the values at moderate to high strain decrease. In the uncured state, tangent delta is related to viscous heating and the processability characteristics of rubber compounds. The pain effect is the decrease in the elastic modulus of a highly reinforced uncured rubber compound as we increase the strain. The pain effect lets us evaluate compounds qualitatively and quantitatively. This method may be applied for quality control of the rubber mixing operation, research and development evaluation of new compound formulations or process conditions, and is repeatable, reproducible, and very sensitive to compound and process changes. This concludes our pain effect webinar. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. Thank you again for joining us for our first webinar. We look forward to many educational talks in the future.